Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Very exciting news for the LA area. I will be performing. On Saturday, March 16th, put it in your calendars. For my special Patreon peeps, I will be dropping the code so you can get your tickets early on Tuesday. And then for everyone, you'll be able to buy the tickets at heathermcdonald.net on Friday. But put in your calendars. If you're anywhere within the LA area, March 16th, 7 p.m., I will be performing the best show on earth. Hello, and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, we know who is going to the Super Bowl. It's the Chiefs and the 49ers. And I think it's nice that they have like a little Sunday off. So there's like a dead Sunday in between. I don't know, just to like probably just do spas or whatever, get a spray tan, whatever you need to do before the Super Bowl for the guys. And um, it was a really great moment. You know I am pro Taylor and... Travis and everyone is like, oh, my God, she was so great because they were happy to see each other. But then when he saw his brother, she stepped back. She had let them have their moment. She let the mom hug him first. And then I do think that's really great. But also most other girlfriends of professional football players would do that, too. But I do think it just, again, adds to the character that I think that she has. I just think she's a really good person. And when I saw this, I'm like, oh, this is so great that she has like he she has a cute football player. And I just think of that song, you know, like the song about she wears short skirts. I wear T-shirts. She's captain of the cheer team and I'm in the bleachers. And I'm like, I wonder if this is the ultimate high school like F you to the bitches when she was in high school before she became a big star. And now she is dating the best football player you could date. And I think they will get engaged by May. I talk about it in a future episode that I already recorded. So who knows? I don't think it's going to happen like at the Super Bowl. I don't think she would want it. And even if they've talked about it, I think she'd be like, please do not do that because the world will hate me if any of this is made about me. So I do believe they'll get engaged. And I think they're going to have one or two kids. And I think it would be really cute instead of having two boys. She has two girls. She has two sisters. And then the mom is like, oh, I don't even know what to do with girls. Okay, that's how cute this is. Okay, now here's another story that is about young women. And you know I support young women and especially their education. I come from a school that was a all same sex, all female school. And I believe that is a great high school education if you choose to have it for yourself or for your daughter And it's very important that we keep these institutions alive, whether they're Catholic or non-denominational. This one is Catholic. It's called Lorena. It's very similar to the one I went, but it's about 20 minutes from me in Thousand Oaks. It sits on 36 acres and it's been around for like 50, 60 years. They just got a letter, all the parents, that the school is closing in June. Their daughters don't know what to do. Think about if you were a junior, the school starts in sixth grade. What's, what, how are they feeling? The parents are upset because they're not showing the financials. They're not being honest about it. And I think this has to do with real estate. I think this is a real estate deal that's pending and they're not being honest about it. And it makes me nervous because when you have an all-girls school that does not involve football, the money and everything is not like it is at a school that has a football team. The land is just a beautiful piece of property. And in California, it's very valuable. And I think this is something, somebody is offering them a lot of money to have this land. I don't know this for a fact. That is my prediction. And I think there needs to be a greater transparency. And I feel really sorry for these girls and their parents and their parents who have paid 20000 a year for every year. And now their daughter's a junior who's been there since sixth grade. And they're like, by the way, the school's closing. Deal with it. So there you go. This is a story that interests me. It should interest you. It's about female single sex high schools. And I think it's um, one that everyone should look at and really see what was the true story behind it. And it's Lorena and Thousand Oaks. Save Lorena. 
Okay, Caroline Manzo of Real Housewives of New Jersey. You remember her. She finally, they finally paid her enough, in my opinion, to go back. Because she always said she wouldn't unless the money was right. And she went and went on the real Ultimate Girls Trip in Morocco. It was filmed over a year ago, I believe. And it was Alex McCord from New York. And I think um, Eve, Eva from um, Atlanta, Gretchen Rossi from OC, and Brandy Glanville from Bever- Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We heard about how they had to, this big thing happened when they were there, when it happened, and Caroline went home early because the story was that leaked out that, um, you know, Brandy tried to kiss her. She touched her genitals. She touched her boobs. Then she went to a bathroom and she followed her in the bathroom. And apparently there's two witnesses to this, which would be Gretchen Rossi and Alex McCord, according to the new lawsuit that came out. Yes, Caroline Manza is now suing Bravo and the production company, saying that this SA happened to her and they obviously knew about it. They saw it. They heard it. And they were plowing people with alcohol and they didn't stop it on the first time. The second, when you read it all the way through, which is now public record because it's a lawsuit, it, it it really does go on for quite a bit and you feel for her. But she's not suing Brandy. Brandy's upset. Brandy tweeted, can we please air this show to show that this is not, you know, what it was looking like? I'm curious if she's if Caroline is deciding to sue so that we never see the show. So no one ever questions if by any chance she was giggling about it or participatory in it or, you know, moving on or whatever. It's written very much like I just after that I was shaken up, but I had to do my job. So I went back to the dining table. Then it happened again. And when you read it, it is like, oh, my God, this does seem pretty awful. And you feel for Caroline Manzo. But, you know, is so my prediction is Bravo will pay her money. They will settle out of court and we will never see the real house lights of Morocco, which, of course, the other girls are upset about because this was going to like boost their rel- being relevant, maybe get them other parts on other shows. I don't think we're ever going to see it. And Brandy feels like this has really hurt her reputation. I wonder if Brandy could also sue Bravo just so that she could get them deposed to try to prove herself. But here's the thing. It probably happened when she was quite intoxicated. So who knows? The, the footage is going to have to be seen. So unless they settle, the depositions will say, let's show the footage, which will either show Bravo being um, encouraging of it or, you know, complying to it or, um, you know, or Brandy being so out of it or getting drinks or maybe there's a moment where you there's some footage where a producer says, hey, go do that. You know, that was funny. Go do it. I don't know. So this is this is kind of interesting. But I also feel Caroline, A, doesn't want this ever to be seen. She wants it buried. So this is one way to do it. B, she doesn't care about burning the bridge. She never wants to go back to the show. So she might as well do it in a bang, try to save her reputation. And if she truly feels that she um, was violated, then, yes, she should be um, – made whole and if that's because of gaining somebody financially from your one-time employer so be it so we'll see what happens and now for my really fun hilarious interview with the always fun hannah burner all right let's get into traders it's getting real good because now the faithfuls are suspecting that one of the traders might be a housewife And that makes Phaedra real nervous because she's played it cool. No one has suspected her at all. And she doesn't like that there's even conversation about her going around. Meanwhile, they get rid of Larsa. They voted on her. And again, she whips her body around like they all do and says, I was a faithful. I was always a faithful. So they're like, what is up? We who are these traitors? We've every single person we've kicked out has been a faithful. Now, Peter, the pilot from The Bachelor, is starting to be suspicious of Dan because he's like, he never says anything. He's way too cool. He's like, oh, I'm just shy. Could he be a traitor? So they get in there and they decide that the three traitors 
Phaedra is like not happy that they're suspecting a housewife. It's really pissing her off. And we, for the first time, we see a little kind of conflict between Phaedra and Dan. And they decide, you know what? Let's murder Tamara, who is also a housewife, because that'll take the heat off of me that I would kill one of my own. And I'm like, um, sorry, girl, but the fact that you're going to kill a housewife is so housewife, it doesn't matter. But we see Tamara get her letter of death. And she's like the first one we see kind of crying and is pretty sad about it. And she's like, well, I had fun in Scotland. and But she's like, but this better not be a housewife that did this to me. So she's gone. And now they are like, what are we going to do? They come back from breakfast and they're like, well, we brought somebody new to, to come. And they're like, who? And it's Kate Chastain, who in the first season went really far in the game and if you watch Below Deck and all the other things she's done since, she is a really kind of fascinating, fun person to watch. And she's really smart. And this is a perfect game for her. So the fact that she's back, that she went so far season one, should make everybody real nervous. So she's like, hmm, let's see what's going on here. So they play this game where they say, OK, six of you are going to be out in the woods and in the woods, there's a chance that you could find a shield and you're going to break up in twos and you're going to find these birds and then do their bird sound to the rest of the people who are in the castle. And then they have to find the matching bird to the sound, which is like a fun little thing running around. So Peter tells the other people that are all looking for the shield, which is six people. He goes, look, no matter who gets it, I'm going to say that I have it along with um, Janelle. And I'm going to say it to the people I think are the traitors, one being that he thinks it's Dan, who is a traitor, to see how he's going to react in the round table. OK, so then they get in the round table and they decide like we half the group thinks it's Janelle. Um, you know, a couple of people think it might be Kevin. But then Dan gets like four or five votes and he is a traitor. But Janelle has more votes. She gets up there and she's like, I was a faithful, too. So now that Dan kind of has a target on, a back, on his back, the three traders come back together and they're like, could Peter be like setting a trap? Could he, you know, be trying to, to trick us? And Dan is like, I don't think Peter's smart enough to do that, which of course he is. And to be a pilot, you have to be pretty, pretty smart. So at this point, they're just kind of deciding what they should do. And Dan's like, even if Someone has a shield. I say we try to get them banished by the group in the round table. There, there's like lots of twists and turns, which I really like. And now, of course, we have Kate Chastain. And who is she going to align herself with being that she's come late? And will they be threatened by her or will they want to try to embrace her? Of course, you know, what, what are we going to see? I mean, she could eventually somehow become a traitor, too. I don't know. The game changes all the time. That's why you got to watch. And you can watch every Thursday on Peacock. It drops at 9 p.m. Eastern. So get into it. There's five episodes out. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I am back with return Juicy Scooper, funny lady, Hannah Burner. I'm so happy to be here. I love you so much. Oh, I love you too. We hung out in the Hamptons. We hung out in the Hamps. We did. And then I, I love that you um, speak so highly of me on other people's shows. Do I? Oh, I should remember. be talking you and, shit. You and, Cla <laughs> you and Claudia. Somehow, I like. I don't even think someone told me. I mean, because I listen to Claudia yeah. as the toast sometimes. And I was like just so pleasantly surprised. There's nothing oh better than like... All of a sudden, you're hearing two t people talk behind your back on a podcast, and it's and it's positive. <laughs> and you're like, "What? That's the scoop." I'm actually spreading love and joy. I love it. I love it that you guys were kind of like uh, that. I was kind of like a fun, like uh, comedian <laughs> auntie for no, you. But like, as two female podcasters, you gotta put respect where respect is due for. Juicy Scoop, and we we all love kind of building that kind of community of like yeah. the silly girls out here. Support and Support the women, women supporting women. And look, you put out fire content. You do, no one can argue that. You know what, you know who doesn't support women? <laughs> <laughs> no, real, no, you know what, you know what, you know who really doesn't, Who, Ramona, okay? who, who? Okay, you know what, Bethany, she really doesn't, okay? She can go to my anti-skincare line, but it's very upsetting, all right? Um, we support women here we at do. Juicy Scoop and at Hannah Burner, and you have you are doing so well. I love your stuff on 
girl on the street. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, that's so funny. No, I mean, you really like you build that up yourself. That was so great. And you just came from another podcast. And I was going to talk about this because it's all over the press that Brittany Schmidt, mm -hmm. and I think this is really smart that she saved this. Sometimes you got to save mm -hmm. your juicy story for the first episode of your new podcast. Mm -hmm. And she comes out with it with uh, Brittany Furlon, who I love, and mm -hmm. she's been on here as well. And um, and it's that she dated Army Hammer after the scandal, recent. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, even if you didn't, even if you didn't want to date him, mm -hmm. I would have more respect if she was like, look, I knew we were about to launch this podcast. <laughs> And I saw him at a bar, and I'm like, uh, "Look, I can take a bite for the team." <laughs> so fucked up, but like, I do understand doing something for the story, and I do think in her weird comedian brain that we have too, she was like, "Something entertaining is gonna come of this." Um, but I didn't know she was gonna tell people because I knew. Yeah. And then I was like, "Oh, I'm in LA," and she goes, "Oh yeah, that's the day my Army Hammer episode's dropping," and I'm like, "Oh, are you sure you?" Oh, is that okay? That's going to be intense. But I haven't seen anything because okay, I haven't I been on my phone. I just saw the clip. I just saw the clip. Yeah. And she, you know, met him and was like, look, we're going to have to talk about the fact of the cannibalism. And the mm -hmm. way he described it to her was like, look, yeah, I get to be inside of you. And so therefore, I want you inside of me by, I guess, eating part of you. Anyway, Why she can't was, she just put a finger in the butt? Was, yeah, that's what she said. That was her joke. <laughs> Did she? Yes. <laughs> Now everyone's going to accuse you of stealing that joke. Oh, but not again. <laughs> but I swear to God, she said she hasn't seen the clip. I haven't seen the clip. That's exactly what she said. Look, she, she goes, uh, yeah. And um, no, but then she said, so she goes, uh, but, you know, she was classy about it. She's like, look, I was down. I'm not, you know, saying anybody else's experience is their experience for me. But she also went in post the scandal mm -hmm. you know the other girls mm -hmm. they thought they're just dating a really hot guy that was yeah. you know super into them and they were like yeah i will be at your porch yeah. with a leash on my neck <laughs> waiting for you because you are army hammer and you're i hot. can't judge britney for having a i'm gonna fix him moment because we've all been there we go the other girls couldn't but i'm gonna turn you into a vanilla king i don't think she <laughs> thought she was gonna fix him i think she was like i'm down for the podcast story i'm down <laughs> Because he's still hot. I yeah. can take a bite. Mm -hmm. And then she got a little tattoo. She let him tattoo her fingers. Mm. Yeah, I didn't see that. The um, the dot and whatever you call it. What do you call it? The spot and dot tats? Oh, yeah, what the cool kids are doing. Yeah, the stick and poke. The I really, this is what I'm going to pray for in the future. Okay, let's pray. That they have a way of even coming up with a much easier process to remove these tattoos. Poor Pete Davidson. A poor he, everybody. Listen. I'd be in rehab too if I was getting my whole body like pulled Lift, off. I I get it. I get it's really fashionable, and I get like it's fun, and yeah. I get that it's. But I'm telling you, you're going this. What I used to say to my kids, my sons, <laughs> is I said, "Remember when you liked Dora oh, the Explorer?" You're so. And right. I go, "Well, now you're on the baseball team." Yep. Yeah. And you take off your shirt to go jump in the pool with your friends. They're going to think you're a loser. And you've got, you know, <laughs> swipe or no swiping on your back. <laughs> no, I was talking to Paige last week about how crazy the fashion industry is. How, like, red's the color. Everyone needs red. And then they go, mm, everyone bought it. Now leopard's the thing everyone needs. And I'm like, that's why I never got tattoo. Because in three weeks, it's not, not cool. Are you not tattooed either? I have no tattoo. I'm raw. I'm, I'm a raw dog. So am I. <gasps> Look at us. We're just so pure. We're just such angel virgin babies. You yes. Know? Right I, get out of the that, I get that it's like fashionable and I do like the look, but whatever. No, I, don't Who cares? Trust, I don't trust myself. Who I'm not cares? like better than people. She's I don't got trust a good myself. Story. They got a lot of press. It's worth the finger tattoos. I'm sure we'll figure <laughs> out a way to remove it very simply. I know, I know but um, honestly, press is hard. Like, yeah. I think she wanted to like speak out about it, but then it never, the press, you start to feel dirty where you're like, I don't, we don't need to keep talking about this. So I hope that it. S Save Calms it for the down. pod. That's I why know. I say save it for save the it, pod. Save it for camera. Save it for the pod. Everyone has a pod. Save it for the pod. <laughs> How do you feel about um, our girl Natasha Legera going topless at the improv? 
I I kind of fucking loved it. Let me just explain what happened for people that yes. might have missed it. Yes. Natasha Legera Legero is a, as I mispronounced her name. No, but she has been a friend of mine for many, many years. She's super funny. She's a mom. She's written a book. She has a podcast with her husband, who's a very successful comic too. And she went to the improv and Burt Kreischer has this bit where he's been doing forever. I know it's a bit now. It's just him. Well, first of all, I thought thought that he like went Ozempic and got all skinny. But then when I saw him in that, he didn't look skinny. I think he pushes it out sometimes. Oh, oh, he pushes it out now. But I also, I thought he just did it like in arenas. But I kind of respect that he does it in like small club shows too. (laughs) No, I think he always, he's always done it and people want it. And so afterwards... He brings her up and she decided to, you know, show her boobs Mm -hmm. right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And she has a nice body and nice boobs. And then she just put on like a little jacket over and then I Mm -hmm. guess continued with her act. But of course, Mm -hmm. someone filmed it and it got out. And um, anyway, I don't know how much trouble I'm going to have selling tickets coming (laughs) this year. But I I asked you to go to Craig's with me tonight. (laughs) Because I was going to go full 70s bush, lift up the skirt outside of Craig's with you because you have a lot more followers than me. And then TMZ would be like, Heather Mitchell shows full bush. Because I have to compete with fucking Arnie, uh, Army Hammer and going topless. Like the press cycle is intense I mean, right now. Being a female comic, it is hard. It is hard to sell a ticket. I think so, she, I think um, she was also kind of making fun of the whole concept of like, well, oh, we sure. can never do that. And I kind of, I love, I kind of loved it I as long as she felt okay that it went online. I think she went is fine with it, and yeah. she did sell out in like ten minutes of yeah. some other club. Yeah. And I say, hey, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Whoever buys a ticket is going to be thrilled because she's a really funny comic. Yeah, myself included. But sometimes it's hard to move tickets, so I'm just thinking about. Yeah. God forbid. But do you want a bunch of creepy dudes at your show? That's not the energy you want. You've no, cultivated. I won't. A be- I'll have a be- like a feminists that are like, <laughs> yes, Heather's bringing back the bush. I I respect the bush, except I'm kind of sweaty. So when I grow it out, it's like there's stuff in there. It's gross. I don't even have a bush, but I would just. I, you got to be original. <laughs> you you're gonna buy a wig. I want to stand out. <laughs> I want to stand Braid out. It, get extensions as, on your puss. Listen. <laughs> Feigning on stage did nothing for me. So no, go, that I was iconic. Go topless. That was iconic. It's done nothing for me. Really? Because people no. were like, I don't know if I want to go to the show and like witness her. No, it's just break like her it, head. it's just like everybody just reported on it, but nobody <laughs> like was like, but wait, let's have her come on the show. We could talk to her. No, they just like talked about it and then just like got mad at me that I got. Back. I was either a libtard for being vaccinated. Or you, you weren't know, eating enough, so you yeah, fainted. <laughs> like I don't even know. She's like, too skinny. <laughs> so I her legs look, are too long. I am looking for um, looking for anything that will help move it. But you no, have to I, sleep. I love her. I think it's funny, and I thought it was great. And it's true. Like why not? Who cares? You have to sleep with your best friend's husband on a reality show and not tell anyone about it. That's what you did. That's what you have to do. No, but that's what you did. Just kidding. Yeah, I was like, did I? I literally was like, is that what they edited? <laughs> no, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to what you're talking about. You're talking about Southern Charm <laughs> and Scandival. Oh, and Scandival. I don't know. There's so many. True, We're it's all house. becoming one. First, I want to tell you. Mm-hmm. First, you know, I'm obsessed with the Lauren Sanchez, Jeff Bezos. Yes. They had a party, his 60th birthday, and we were not invited. Somehow. We were not invited, but one of the po- one of the things said what was there, like A list actors, A list actors. <laughs> actors, McDonald's, and I was like, McDonald's, <laughs> Heather McDonald's. No, they just brought in McDonald's because that was his first job. Again, everyone's down with the flex. But how do you bring the, in every, McDonald's? Like the, the owner? Like the, of no, no, they brought in the food. Like the burgers were featured. Oh, or I thought they brought Ronald McDonald's. <laughs> He's just smoozing with like Kim Kardashian. No, you know that was like let's remind everybody that Jeff Bezos at one time worked at McDonald's when he was sixteen. Yeah, it's so it was like a nice flex. But listen, she looked gorgeous. She had all her A list friends there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Paris and you know they had it in Beverly Hills sparkly and I just thought this was really weird Katy Perry <laughs> and Orlando Bloom they went with like alien um she had horns coming out of her head mm-hmm. and then he had like and then she made him wear some weird alien thing she had like an alien ear and nobody else was dressed like an alien this is giving like their version of you at Craig's they're well, just you know trying to get attention it was an alien themed thing 
spaced out and starry eyed. Maybe that was, and they Be- went because full. Chris had um, like a Judith Lieber bag, but it was a little alien head. Okay. Yeah, so they just went the hardest, and they got the press. And you know, maybe you need to go to Craig's with an alien on your head. Yeah, I know. It, it's a- anything we don't. Also, know. Also, they were in makeup for probably like six hours for that. I know. Like, how? it's like no, it's not worth. It. I mean, that's weird. Probably... But I, yeah, that would have been a good party to go to. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, Kylie, are you following any of this Fashion Week stuff? A little bit. Yeah, I saw Kylie around. She's she's evolving based on her man. You know, the Kardashians like to see who they're so dating. So you believe this is a real relationship oh i kind of have insider information just that because i'm from like new york so she's supposedly dating timothy uh, chevrolet (laughs) timothy chalamet (laughs) who is willy wonka yeah so what do you think is happening there i think i just know that like the kardashians are pretty like once you're in there like he can't like talk to the same people that were in his life like he's in a new system now and it's like in the Kardashian kind of, you know, oh, no, they're going to. That's gonna what you think? Me. I just think I know that he's he's fully into this. Like, it's for real. You think they're fully. I'm not saying they're getting married or anything, but like they're fully committing to the bit. So and you think they're definitely boning? Yeah. Did you see that one kiss that was <laughs> captured? <laughs> you go that those people don't know how sex works. <laughs> like it was just like. I think it was just like a mix. Back, I think like if you very... have that much filler in your lip, it is hard to know where your lip starts and stops. Well, she's kind of going for like a new look, which is natural not, beauty, not the lashes, not the heavy lashes. Now, people yeah. think it's because she's coming out with a new mascara. OK. And so we're getting away from like the heavy glam. And I do see that like in trends and stuff like it's going to be, you know, like a, a not a lot as lined of a lip, not mm-hmm. as you know, lined or heavy of an eye, that kind of makeup is kind of coming its way. Yeah. And so she kind of went with that look at this uh, fashion party, but people thought that she looked really old. In Because I think she, just what she wore, I think she just was like, I don't know. She does look older than 26 for sure. My argument is I, I agree to an extent, but I think it's when you're really young and yeah. you get a ton of filler and then you don't wear that much makeup, you look like an older woman. Yes, you look like an older woman who's had work done. Who's had work done. Because yeah. like, if, if she's baby face and her face looks like a baby, you look young. But it's like she's trying to pull off this natural look with an unnatural face. Yeah. And like I support all beauty standards, but like there's a lot of filler in that face and it is fighting for its life. I know it'd be kind of interesting... I always remember Joan Rivers had a really funny joke. She goes, I wish I had a twin sister so I could see what I would look like if I had never <laughs> gotten plastic surgery. Like, you kind of don't yeah. know. Like, and I think like, you just And re- now I feel like it must it would be such a hard thing mm-hmm. to then, like, when she did at one point, she kind of, like, took the lips down. But then she went back up because she was like, I don't enjoy also, doing my lipstick as much with no lip filler. And like, I don't think your lips look the same after s- injecting them so much. They're not going to have the same bourgeoisie I don't know I also think when the influencers are like young like Alex Earl if you're familiar with her people people I'm familiar with what do you think (laughs) I know I may look as old (laughs) as Kylie looks in this photo but but I'm actually very hip in the TikTok world she's a specific algorithm you know like some people have no idea who she is but um people accuse her of looking old because she's had a lot of work done when it's not that they look old it's just you associate like seeing certain work that like real housewives have yeah so it's like she's looking like a real housewife that like didn't put a lot of makeup on well it is weird like i said i've been watching like these old episodes of things not even that old just like 10 15 years back yeah and like to see thin lips and no eyelashes and like to see people with bad jaw lines and like (laughs) and and like and like i foreheads no jaw lines and and yeah and teeth that are not perfect i love watching like a 90s 90s rom-com yeah all the cute girls no one has lips and that was what was beautiful and that's why you shouldn't get a tattoo because who knows what it's going to be cool but um never know it's so funny how the beauty trends were so different and stuff yeah and that's why all the girls are now who wanted these like insane butt jobs are now getting them taken in and it's like your body should not be a trend do you know anyone that's getting their butt uh taken down i don't know anyone but i would love to it sounds like a fucking fascinating story well i'm really glad that the butt is is going back out 
I, I feel mean, like going in. there wasn't an equilibrium. Like you'd be like tilted. Yeah. Like you have too much weight in one part of your body. Right. <laughs> I just, th- I, yeah, I think it's. You sit down and you're like three feet taller. I once had someone that just wrote me the angriest uh, email and they're oh. like, I don't know why you your friends don't conv- convince you to get an ass job. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm you like, would look first insane. Of all, first of all, it's very hard for me to <laughs> want to get a part of my body done that I can't see. <laughs> Like, I can't see it. Heather, I'm don't sorry. I, I like looking at my face when it looks good because that's what I have to look at. I have also, to look at my hair. I have to look at my boobs. I have to look at my waist. Look at the front of my legs. When am I looking at the back side of my body? That's why I don't body? curl the back of my hair. I don't have time. But also, your legs are so beautiful. I'm obsessed with her legs in like a creepy way. It would make your legs look weird that out of your sticks. Right, it's the come ant. Like, it it's all, the ant Yes, butt. it would be an ant butt. And it, so it, it, I feel like everyone... There is a flow that we should like respect a little bit of like your proportions. Even right. If, like I'm a little pear shaped. I, I lean in. Okay. We're a beautiful one, pear. One trend that I would like to see <laughs> leave in 2024 <laughs> is the out of control Muppet eyelashes. Yeah, oh, for sure. And, and I know how it happens. I know that people get the eyelash extensions at the salon uh-huh. and then a couple fall out and then they go back and then they fill those and then they keep filling them and then they keep filling them. And the next thing you know, you look like you've escaped an insane asylum. But you don't realize it. No, it's like it's like what we would call it tanorexia in my day. Yes. Where you keep thinking you need to get tanner and tanner, but like you can't see it. Just like an anorexic sometimes can't see yeah. that they're already thin. Yeah. Like it's the same thing. So I almost think with these lashes... And it's just crazy because, you know, a socialite who's 55 will have the same black, thick lashes and Mm -hmm. blonde hair that the girl handing you your Chick-fil-A will have. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't look good on anybody. And Jeff Bezos at McDonald's when he was working there. No, but sometimes I will, like, get distracted by the eyelashes. So I'm not even seeing the person's face. I'm just like, eyelashes. And it's like, it's too much. And I do. I do the lashes, but I just do them myself and then I wash them off. Oh, she's an independent woman. <laughs> but I get it. I get whatever works for you people. Um, but I do also have my opinion of what looks good. I think she looks fine in this photo. Yeah. I don't know. She looked, she also looked really cute in another photo where she and her daughter both wore black. Yeah. And like was going to all the all the fashion. Did, have you ever been invited to the fashion week stuff? I've done like a couple things, but I haven't really fully experienced it. And I'm not a big partier. Paige... I think this year is going to get more into it. It seems exhausting. Like I would think that they'd be inviting her to all the stuff. It's exhausting. Every day you have to get like your makeup done. You have to have outfits for every show that correlate. Then everyone's judging like where you're sitting. And then it's it's quite snobby. And then you have right. to get the photo. And then everyone's like, well, why are the photographers taking photos of her and not of me? And fashion is very, you know, uppity like that. Um, I may go with I'm her for the story. I'm going to also say something real mean. Mm? Mm. J-Lo recently was at a fashion show. <gasps> and her hair was like, she didn't have any of the extensions. Mm-hmm. And it was like just back and it was kind of like in a weird greasy style. And they had these like weird little glasses on. And people got a photo of her like in the sun where she's not controlling the photos and mm-hmm. stuff. And she didn't put her olive oil on. I mean, she still looked great. Mm-hmm. But you're like, okay. She's okay, a this is a girl person. who, this is a woman who, you know, is over 50 mm-hmm. and, you know, I'm not who's, trying dealing, to be... who's dealing with like a crotchety husband. <laughs> <laughs> Whose husband is just, just crotchety. Yeah. <laughs> he's still hot. She has to defend him because he hasn't smiled in four years. Yeah. She's like, he's, he's not kidnapped. He's okay. He's right. breathing. Right. I feed him every couple hours. I, and I don't mean to be a hero, but like, can we stop? like getting so upset with women aging and then can we stop that like is that the worst thing that kylie looks older like who gives a fuck it's like yeah i've been through shit she's also a mother of two yeah she's tired yeah she's exhausted and then she has to read all this horrible shit about her i'd look old as fuck too i know you're right then i'm like why am i even talking about it that way (laughs) okay real housewives news do you know that alexis bellino is returning to the real housewives of oc as a friend of the show what do you think well, I mean, they'd be crazy not to ask her. She's dating Shannon Bedore's ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and she was on it previously, so there's a history there. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, look, she definitely, it's a it's the best way to get on a job, get on the show, other than doing what Monica did. 
which was work for a person who was about to go to prison and then <laughs> and, and then become a FBI <laughs> troll an FBI what do you call it um informant yeah. so people need to know how to get how to get on a show for the first time mm-hmm. that you become an internet troll mm-hmm. assistant for someone who's about to go to prison that's one way mm-hmm. Or to get back on a show, you try to date somebody's ex. She's basically creating a storyline instead of producers being like, come on the show, what should we your storyline be? She's like, bitch, I got a season for you. I Here, here it is on a, a silver platter. And the producers, they don't have to do as much work. This is perfect for them. And do you think John, do you think she's using John? Or do you think they're using each other? Or they really might be just like in a honeymoon phase of being down and happy? I think it's always like a mix of both where like you might like each other, but do you like each other because you know you're going to get attention and people are going to talk about you guys and there's going to be like a fun high, like you're being naughty. Yeah, it's fun to go out. And the cameras, it's hot. Like, and you get confused. Like, do I like him or do I like the attention? Right. Yeah. And then Shannon Bedore, she's just got to roll up there and just... When you said roll. (laughs) I just act completely unbothered because the entire season is going to be Tamara and everybody poking at her. And the producers are going to say everything they can to get her bothered. To get her riled up. Because if she doesn't get riled up, they don't have a season. No. So they'll they'll have to. And then they'll go, if you don't have a freak out (laughs) in which you call yourself Shannon Storms Bedore (laughs) and talk with your hands, you're not coming back next season. I think she will. I think she will have a great season. Um, but she, has- she knows at this point, does she know she has to do that? Like, I just wonder, like, is she like, look, I want to, I don't care. It's going to be, you know, it's been a couple months that we've been broken up. I'm mm-hmm. getting over my DUI situation. Mm-hmm. I lost a trace amigas. I'm now just a dose. Mm-hmm. And and I'm going to go to this, th- I'm going to go to this party where they're serving mm-hmm. enchiladas and John and, and Alexis are going to be Set there. Set the scene. And I'm going to have to be like. Oh, hello. You know, not have tequila, not. I think it's going to start with her being like, this is my plan for the season. I'm going to hold it together. I'm above it and I don't care. Yeah. But whenever you come up with a plan, the producers will laugh at it and then they'll let it sit. They'll let it simmer. And the next thing you know, by episode five, she's going to be like, how fucking dare she? Now, being that you got your start (laughs) as a cast member on Summer House, Mm -hmm. what is your opinion of kind of how Monica was insinuating on Real House of Salt Lake that the producers did know that she was in behind the troll account. And mm-hmm. Andy's like, that's not true. And mm-hmm. she kind of like shut down. What is your opinion? So full transparency, I haven't watched Bravo since I've been off Summer oh, House. That's, that's probably a healthy thing. So I've been on a cleanse. <laughs> okay. Um, because I can't watch it the same way. I can't appreciate it the same way. But I did. I loved Bravo back in the yeah. day, and I know enough to be able to speak right, on right. it. And I used to watch all of it. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on with the Monica stuff. I saw the social media things. There's, there's definitely a possibility. The producer's job is to see a potential story and make sure it gets played out. Right. But also, it can't be too obvious that you're about to be put in this position where the girls are going to yell at you. So there is a possibility where there there's different seeds planted with each person and every person expects something different and that's how they get TV gold. Yeah. Like you're going in thinking like everyone's going to love me or everyone's going to think something about me but no one's going to believe it. And so everyone is going in with a different mindset. Right. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Because if everyone knows what's going to happen, that's not good TV. If everyone right. knows, oh, she's about to get called out. Um, yeah, I always think it's really interesting how now I know that like each person has their own producer who's kind of like their coach Mm -hmm. or their hype man Mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it. And also that's the person that gets in your head and is like, you should be pissed that they didn't seat you at the head of the table. Oh, I fully have been in that situation where I wasn't pissed and they were like, no, you look stupid that you're not pissed or like you look weak that you're not pissed or get a little pissed and people will love that. Yeah. But also I think producers get competitive with each other and they want their person to be the star to, 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 to do well. Cause oh. it means they got their person to perform. Got it. So that's Good why point. there's, there is so many mind games, which actually makes it more fascinating. But that's why sometimes the final product is way more dull than what actually happened to orchestrate that final golden moment that you see like five minutes of. Do you remember the show? <laughs> um, that was a scripted show that was, unreal. Yes. Yeah. I have always said 
why, maybe they have, but that they really need to do that with yeah. a fictional housewife. But what I also think is that there is the idea like, oh, these people. On they the shouldn't sh- do it actually with a fictional housewife. They should do it more with a combo audio, a combo show. They should do like a, a, a fictional like southern charm mm-hmm. summer house kind of a thing mm-hmm. Vanderpump something yeah. that you create some hot fake show that's like a va- <laughs> like a Vanderpump something yeah because I think it is more fun when there's guys yeah and when the and it's a little younger yeah and then you're welcome if you haven't thought of this already take the idea at least I have it noted that I came up with it when it, <laughs> when it airs a year and a half from now on Hulu um and then it's, you know, just like Unreal, it's yeah. really about, you know, the producers and almost and like fighting they for and, their... and planting and like someone yes. is like planting a something and that the producers wasn't real. have their own drama going on. I remember when they would fight with each other. Like, I'd be like, are you guys mad? And like, I had producers on my show who got married. Like, they're having full love stories. They're partying after we party. Like, it's a whole fucking thing. And then like, you're friends with some. You be it's, it's incredible. But I also have to say what people forget. And they can be kind of mean to some people on reality shows where they'll be like, oh, th- she's trying to make her own storyline. A lot of the time you get threatened, like, if you don't have a storyline this year, you're getting fired. It's it's not like you're trying to just get a lot of attention. It's like we're all here to do a job at the end of the day, and it's put out a good reality show. And that's kind of the first idea. And then it becomes, well, I want to be the star. No, I want to be the star. Well, she's trying to make me look bad. Well, you're trying to make me look bad. And it just becomes an ego fest. And then that's golden TV. Okay, now I'm remembering some juicy stuff from Real Housewives. Because I was, <laughs> I was very friendly with them many years ago. And I went to Heather Dubrow's groundbreaking of her land party, which now she sold that place for fifty five million or whatever it is. And I remember having hearing the producer say to her, like doing the uh, interview off to the side or what do you call it? Mm-hmm. And they're like getting trying to wrangle her up that like Shannon Bador is not here yet. Like she's mm-hmm. late. She's late. Yeah. And then I remember watching it and Shannon was like mad at David, who was her husband at the time, because she was like, I told you we were supposed to be here. He's like, we were doing the basketball. And I'm like, now, isn't that, I always think when there's any bit of a storyline of being late, I'm like, <laughs> the audience knows that you, they're holding you in the car yep. down the street. Mm-hmm. But, but she doesn't you know to- that she's being held to be late. She thinks she's being held because producers literally tell you when it's your time to shoot. So she thinks she's being held. So and maybe they're getting her riled up like, you know, she might have said this about you or she did that. So she's coming in a little mad. Then you have her coming in being like, I guess I should be mad. And then she has an attitude with you. And then you're like, oh, this is a good moment. And next thing you know, you're like, what did you just say to me? And next thing you know, you're fighting and you're like, I don't even like fighting. Right. (laughs) Like, how did we get here? But think about it in your everyday life. I don't know about you, but the last two years off reality TV, I can't tell you one like public fight I've had with a person but then you shoot a reality show you don't just turn into a different person like it takes days and days and days to get your head in that mindset of like being scared and pissed off <laughs> right and yeah I, I I no, I can totally understand the psychological warfare of it yeah because and then because you're like of course when you're watching this you're like um you know like uh, on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills mm-hmm. Sutton does not like this woman, this new woman named Anne Marie, mm-hmm. who's a nurse of anesthesiologist, mm-hmm. because the nurse has said over and over, I don't believe that Sutton has a small esophagus. <laughs> I don't believe that's a real medical condition. <laughs> I think it's because she probably has an eating disorder or would just rather drink her lunch, mm-hmm. you know, type of thing. And she says it over and over and over again, mm-hmm. and she's getting a lot of hate for it. Mm-hmm. And but then, of course. You know, Kyle's like, well, you invited her to Barcelona, you know, because it's her fake trip. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, Mm -hmm. you know, who would like to go to Barcelona? Mm -hmm. I know somebody who has a beautiful home that we can borrow. (laughs) You're like, all right. And then, um, but like, do you imagine in real life, like, taking your friends on the trip of a lifetime and this chick that you just met has been a complete asshole to you Mm -hmm. for the last four times and you're like, oh, but I guess you'll still get to stay at the mansion. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, of course we just go along with it, but- yeah. And also, if someone does something annoying, the audience wants someone to put them in their place. So that's where I think villains get created because you think you're putting someone in their place because you think they're looking awful. Yeah. And that's where they get to have fun with it to be like, or was she just defending this? Or was right. she just, or they didn't show anything she said. And just, it's like, I always say it's like a fight where someone starts putting their phone on you, but like at the end of the fight and they just pull like a crazy thing you said and you're like, okay, that's, I mean, it didn't just start like that. Right. <laughs> it, it, there were things that led up to that. Well, in this case, she then 
responded on her page, the Anne Marie, and she did basically say this this was annoying too. I didn't. It was inauthentic how many times I brought it up. Like yeah. wink, wink. Like she was winking yes. at us to be like. The producers made me do this. And she was a newbie. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you want to be on the show. Everyone's watched the show. You want to. Also, they're probably telling her, like, everyone's saying it. Everyone else said it in confessionals. You should say it, too. Yeah. Also, you don't have a storyline. And you're not going to be return if you don't speak on this. And, like, she's not going to care. Like, it's honestly, she probably wants to talk about her eating disorder. Like, that's the kind of shit you hear. And you're also, when you have enough people around you being like, yeah, do it. You're like, okay, yes, okay. And next thing you know, the you're doing something you. that doesn't sound like you. But also, y- you, like, as the comics, like, what I love about it is we could go on stage and I could do anything I want and no one could tell me not to. I don't even have a coach. We don't have a director. <laughs> we just fucking go off. Right. And it's very freeing. And I think it's been fr- th- therapeutic for me. But in these shows, you can try to, like, just, like, kind of go off script. Wait, watch the table. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You can try to go off script, but, like, it just won't be picked up so when you see a storyline that they like like you kind of have to lean into it because they're like this is what we're doing so either you get an opinion on it i don't care about your side thing you're trying to express your charity (laughs) i don't give a fuck are you charity are you trying to start stand up no one gives a fuck (laughs) oh you fell in love with your boyfriend no one cares about that positivity right nobody (laughs) nobody wants to no one cares about your experience as a stand-up <laughs> the amount of times that stand-ups have tried to like sell that as a show no and nobody because it's a little lonely and depressing anyway. everybody thinks i know and, and when you're <laughs> in it you're like why are there not cameras here I well find, stand-ups are hilarious i find this so juicy and entertaining this is so great mm-hmm. but even the show on hbo which was crashing yeah which i thought was done pretty well yeah. about it scripted um even that could, didn't last after a few seasons yeah. it's like i just think there's certain things you is know it's just so not relatable that we want to public speak like we're so mentally ill i, I think honestly it is a very unrelatable um profession yeah and i don't think it's one that people are like overly intrigued by yeah it's like oh you're stressed because you have to talk in front of a thousand people then don't live a normal life <laughs> Yeah, like I just think it's one of those things. Like it's just not. Yeah, I don't. Th- I don't think it's something. I think people would rather see a fashion designer followed, or uh-huh. yeah, I think there is. I think they've tried it enough that it is just doesn't hit. I mean, even Seinfeld, the show, started out with him oh, yeah. doing stand up in the beginning, and then at the end was the conclusion of the stand up of like how it got into his act, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then they were like. Yeah, we're, we're going to put a, t- a yeah. 30 second clip in the beginning and then call it a day. <laughs> yeah, we're, and then they just got rid of it at all. And then all he would just reference like, "Oh, I have a show." Yeah. And then but we never saw it. Cuz I mean, so much of the process too with stand up is just us like in the shower like, "Is that funny? Is right. that funny?" and then trying it on stage. But then between is like we're kind of you know, just people showing up on stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hoping for the best. Right. But I do th- I always think I it's do like- think a comedy club like a Vanderpump Rules esque thing of like the waitresses and the comedy club and how it's run with some comics involved could work. Okay, why I think that would be hard mm-hmm. is because the other thing that still a huge amount of the humans on earth don't realize yeah. is that we do jokes for the same joke for years. Yeah. And we perfect it and we say it again. Yeah. And you're basically, if you were to do something like that, you're basically, like I always remember that about Last Comic Standing. Mm. I thought, oh my God, you know, each round they have to come up with a whole new thing that we haven't seen earlier. Like how many hours do you really have? And then you you're like burning it. And, make, and then you're burning it and everything. And so it's like, yeah, I think that would be hard because... I would the magic put, revealed is I would that put we none. practice some of the stuff over and over again. I would some put the, no actual stand up on it, but more the like the hang in the green room, the yeah. drama with the like you, oh I got to go off stage. Oh I fucking bombed. Some guy like punches the wall, and then I feel I just realized that like the waitresses are always hooking up with the comics, and then the, the girl comics are just like, "How y'all doing? Is everyone okay?" <laughs> yeah, but there is, I mean, restaurant drama and customer service is always wild, and the comics are just on the side. Yeah, but I find sometimes comics are a little too self were they either like not self-aware at all or too self-aware and both of those things could or make horrible or great tv yeah and i think it's just so hard and it's so crit- it's such a it's also such a subjective thing mm-hmm. of someone finding somebody funny or not so now yeah. you're 
a reality you're trying to get people to like you as a reality yeah. star being yourself yeah and then also my stand-up and my jokes and my yeah mm-hmm. that it is not good as well, a reality that, show that's it's why too hard i i definitely am grateful for like moving on from the reality tv phase because people aren't watching you to laugh people are watching you to you know feel better about themselves and to like pick sides and that was that wasn't the place i wanted to be oh, the other thing is i think comics always think oh don't you want to know how this was made how this oh. joke came about and everyone's like mm, you're a nerd they, re- they we really don't, don't. <laughs> they know. really don't they're like no just make me laugh i don't want to really Sal Minaj is like it came to me in a dream <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My whole hour. <laughs> yeah. But I think people are like, you know, every, everyone thinks that they could be like, have their own documentary. Like, yeah. I feel like every star, you know, no matter how young or un- inexperienced they are, they're like, hi, <laughs> are we doing this? <laughs> the and slow then, sit down. Yeah, the slow sit down. The coming ready? in, slowing down. Yeah. Oof, I'm kind of okay, nervous. We're talking about this now. Okay. Yeah. I'm ready. And then also it's just like always like trying to show like... Hey, you know, like with the sound and yeah. you know, taking the notes. Yeah. Like, oh, look at the artist at work. Yeah. Like, so I'm like, and obs- I just don't think the, I don't think a regular person cares to know how the art was made. <laughs> but I just the thing. don't. People are obsessed with like how musicians stuff is made and how like the Lady Gaga documentary, Taylor Swift documentary, Beyonce documentary, JLo documentary. I fucking Selena Gomez documentary. I'm obsessed with all of them. I love seeing how people like evolve. Right, like totally but that's cool. Like, right. Because there's just, celebrities. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> there's celebrities and they're like wearing crazy outfits and they're like training like and one and two and three and four. There's paparazzi. Okay. Like this is the difference between like a singing <laughs> documentary. Okay. Like and then I ran and then I ran. And then we're going to do it again. And then I ran to you. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Ooh, that's I like good. that. I ran to you. And then we're going to do the reframe. Burp, 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 burp. Oh, what a genius. Burp. Yeah. And then we're gonna, okay, then <laughs> cut, cut, to, cut to the comedian documentary. Um, Dick, sir? Okay, so then, I, <laughs> so then I'm going to say, fuck it. And then I... Farted. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it, then I farted. And then I got, and then, okay, you do have my set list. <laughs> and it's fart, use the mic as a dick, <laughs> go over the stool and act like I'm fucking it. <laughs> talk to couple in front. Wait, did she just talk to the couple in front? <laughs> Motherfucker, what do I have to tell you? I don't want my opener talking to the audience. That's me. She asked God him what he does it. for a living. God, fuck. Also, Colin Quinn yes. said something so genius. He was like, people love musicians because he, no matter how bad a musician is, you're like, I can't play music. Where he's right. like, with comedy, they're like, I could do that on stage if you suck. <laughs> that is so true. It blew my mind, which is why there's so much pressure because you're like, if I'm not funny, anyone could have done what I just did. Well, it's also <laughs> why I think people have like, you know, why with podcasting, some people are like, they love you, but then they're also just like, they can turn on you on a dime because yeah. they're they're like, well, I could have been a mom talking about housewives. Why does Heather McDonald get to do what she does? Mm-hmm. And they don't know like the you know why how long it's taken and why I can do this for a thousand episodes or you could do it. Like it's fine, mm-hmm. but like you get that. And then I also I also heard something really interesting about like haters and trolls and and social media people, especially when it comes to reality stars and any star for that matter. The reason that they're so quick to like cancel someone is because they um maybe this was my guest the last week i don't know where i came from so it's, i'm not coming up with it but it made sense and but they are like well you know the only reason you're walking on this earth spending your money is because i listened to your podcast or i went to your mm-hmm. show or i went to your movie or whatever and therefore if i don't like you anymore if i don't like what you said i pay your bills so i get to speak and have an opinion versus someone else that's just like a CEO of a company or something. That's so funny because that's like when your parents are like, I put you into this world, I'll take you right out. Like yeah. that's exactly how the trolls are. <laughs> put you right back in my pussy. Speaking of which, I just saw <laughs> such an interesting TikTok where somebody was bringing up the fact like people that were parented like that, mm-hmm. like people that were just like, you know, um, when you're like 12 and they're <laughs> like, hey, I put food on this table for you. <laughs> like, you know, you don't pay rent. And it's like, well, was I supposed to pay rent? Like, I didn't want to be born. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't consent to this. <laughs> like, and it's like that kind of weird parenting that, like, makes a certain generation or a certain kind of person. 
<laughs> which is not at all the way I parent. The only thing I sometimes say to my kids is when they're like so righteous about like, no, mm-hmm. that's not right. I go, hey, guess what? I've been here a little longer. And I find myself like arguing real facts of like, no, you're wrong about that. <laughs> I know this for a fact. I, I know you heard your friend Jeremy say I it. actually <laughs> lived through that part of history. <laughs> You're like, it's actually based on a documentary of real life. I didn't oh spoil God. it for you. Speaking of documentaries, <laughs> but when this is not a funny joke, but whatever. There, <laughs> my son literally said, you know, in the horrible Idaho murder tragedy, he goes, so that's the guy. And I go, well, yeah, that's who's been arrested. Looks like they've got the person, you know. And he goes, God, I just wish they could have like kept that secret until after the Netflix doc. <laughs> And he wasn't even trying to be funny. I go, what? He goes, he goes, I like a Netflix talk better when I don't no. know. It's bad. And I'm like, welcome <laughs> to my world. There isn't one documentary like like that American <laughs> nightmare. Oh, so good. You I, knew. I knew everything you about knew. it. You knew. I That's... knew when it was happening in real time. Mm-hmm. I knew I've seen the 2020, the da da da. But one thing about that American nightmare. So good. Everyone has to watch it. But wait, there's something I want to talk about. Because I did a juicy crime on Patreon about it. But There's this other part of it that people are now discussing. And this is about this couple who got, um, they got um, accused of faking kidnapping. She went kidnapped, she was kidnapped in the middle of the night and they were accused of it. Do you think there could be some connection between the FBI guy and the fact that they originally thought it was the, the, his ex-girlfriend that was going to be kidnapped? The one thing about that doc is that they did not delve into the ex-girlfriend enough. And I thought that maybe she was like, I don't want to be filmed. Because there's, I want so much more information about the ex-girlfriend. There's a theory going around on the internet with that case. Okay. That what if the police or the FBI guy was in love with the Mm ex-girlfriend and set up this kidnapping so that he could be the hero and rescuer. Yeah, because it always seemed like there was another guy involved. Yeah. And that FBI guy clearly did not want. But I don't think it's true because I don't think the, the actual criminal that they caught would have folded and done the plea deal so quickly if there was someone else involved. So I don't yeah. think that's true. Yeah. Long but, story but short, it is, it is I highly recommend thing. the documentary. Yes, that is a good one. Um, <laughs> this is Southern Charm. Yes. I, haven't, I haven't really talked about it, but... I do think that there's something so interesting about the two girls in red, Taylor and Olivia's friendship. Mm. Are you familiar with this? So I know it just from Paige while she was filming the show, literally texting me whenever tea would happen. And I'm like, this season sounds fucking insane. Yeah, I am going to go back and now watch the whole thing because the conclusion is that these two girls that got on the show because one was dating Austin and one was dating Shep. Mm-hmm. And then the one that was dating Shep, they broke up and then she secretly dated Austin. And then the two girls tried to keep their friendship going, but it didn't last. And then, the, then at the reunion, Taylor reveals that Olivia boned one of the former cast members who's like 30 years older than her back when she was like 20 on a drunken night in college. And what is crazy about that, that moment is even if you break up with your best girlfriend, that's some breaking girl code. It's like, and I think that was the consensus. Like it's fine. Friendships aren't forever. Some are for a reason, a season and a lifetime. Mm. And sometimes you break up like you would a boyfriend, but between girls, if there was some secret, you got to still keep that secret. And not only did she reveal the secret, but she revealed it on the reunion. Yeah. And I thought, like, that's why I do like to watch reality shows or even like I didn't watch this whole season. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was like, bitch, like, no, like we're no longer friends, but there's got to be something we don't need to meet and and have a real divorce. Mm -hmm. Like there almost has to be. Maybe that's, you you know what, I thought of another great show. (laughs) Friendship divorce. Oh, it's friendship divorce lawyer. Friendship divorce lawyer. Like, you've been friends for a long time. You have a lot of dirt on each other. You have a lot of dirt on each other. <laughs> How are we splitting this up? <laughs> How are you handling the girls' weekend that happens every fall? Yes. <laughs> are you going to go? Can you? No, I'm not going to go for the whole thing, but I would like to go for the Sunday brunch. Or I won't go, but you have to let me tell her ex that she cheated on him. Right, yes. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, well, or... 
just like splitting up like a children or a pet, you're like, mm-hmm. I'm going to let her have Jennifer in the divorce. I was never really into her. You Friendship guys, breakups. Go ahead. Talk shit about for the rest of your life. And then, but here's a friend. Remember when uh, um, Real House of Atlanta, when um, Nene or no, Cynthia tried to get Nene or one of them tried to get the other one to sign like a friendship agreement. <laughs> it's like an, it's like an NDA, but yeah. like a little different. Yeah. And I think with everybody having a podcast and a Patreon and mm-hmm. talking shit about each other, mm-hmm. I don't think it's a terrible idea. Well, now you see what happened with. Like Scandival, all of them were able to market their own tea from that right. and make money. No one was protecting people. They were like, I'm going to make money on my pod. Which they should. Yeah. But I also think there's something interesting in like, hey, like I want to invite you over to my barbecue. Mm-hmm. But you have a Patreon and I have a Patreon and I need us to know that like you're not going to say mm-hmm. anything positive or negative like mm-hmm. we i think you got to start to say it now well that's why reality because, tv friendships are crazy and yeah. hard to sustain because if anyone turns on you like they can ruin your life and then once they do that you're like we're we're not coming back from this and i feel like this situation i don't know exactly what was going on but i know that taylor had a tough season and she definitely was getting a lot of hate so you're like a fighting animal trying to get people to see you differently. Right. So she was trying to be like, guys, Strategic. look at the person that I'm fighting with. She's not perfect either. Exactly. But then exactly. it's like, okay, okay, where do we stop? You didn't win that one. Yeah. yeah. It's, it was, it's like, yeah, the throwing around like chlamydia and like every, because that's the thing. Everyone is not perfect. Everyone has made mistakes. It's the light they want to shine on it for that season. <laughs> like in Real Housewives of Salt Lake, Monica, <laughs> in defending herself on the reunion, she goes, um, they're like, look at this awful stuff you posted mm-hmm. about Heather. Mm-hmm. And she's like, all I did was repost with a funny little photo of the, of the mean thing that Jen Shaw said about Heather mm-hmm. I, because I wanted you all to realize how awful Jen Shaw is. Mm. And they're like, yeah, but in repeating that, it was again really hurtful to Heather because what she said was an awful thing. Mm-hmm. And again, it was like the logic was just off and again it was just too much trust they were just Mm -hmm. like we just don't trust you so Mm -hmm. like where do we go from here Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's kind of interesting because these girls you know came in and and season whatever they've been on forever shep is like 45 (laughs) but one thing he said that is kind of interesting shep who's literally he is 44 or 45 Mm -hmm. and he's like no, I don't think I ever do want to have kids or get married. He's mm. like, I just can't see being like, oh, we got a sitter tonight. Now we can go out. <laughs> and I kind of like really appreciate Respect the honesty. Him. And I think whoever marries him, he might be that guy that agrees to have a kid. Mm-hmm. But you got to go. You got to know if you marry a Shep, mm-hmm. you can have an OK marriage. Mm-hmm. But you got to know what that marriage is going to be. You've got to know that. He might. He's, he's going to choose the booze over you. Yeah. He's, he, you're, <laughs> he's fun. He's a fun guy. Yeah. Even if. And he's he, great vocabulary. And like transactional marriages aren't always just about one having more money than the other. Like mm-hmm. it, it, you might have to be like, yeah, he's not really going to be that helpful as mm-hmm. a dad until the kid is actually a little older. Mm-hmm. And I got to be OK with that. Or like, he sees don't a think kid. you're going to change him. Or he if falls he, in love with the kid. But you cannot change yeah, you cannot change him. You can't change him. He's, so you, you better yeah. know that like if he says, Yeah, you could have a kid or you could have one, mm-hmm. don't think that you're gonna convince him to have a second. Like yeah. all these things, especially when you're marrying someone over 35, 40, I think yeah. you gotta like know that oh, and for hope sure. and just hope that like we're on the same the same he's page. Set in his but, ways. but I like that he was honest about it because he's just like, No, I don't really I'm not into it. But yeah. He can find a girl who doesn't want kids to, or I always say two people find people who have like compatible demons, like find a girl who he's just like her dad <laughs> and she's like, yeah. I fucking love this. <laughs> and he reminds her of something else. So everyone's happy. Right. It's get the right triggers. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone has dysfunction. You just got to choose which one is right. You know, Sofia Vergara said that they broke up because she didn't want to have oh, kids yeah. and he did. Yeah. What if Shep got with Sofia Vergara? <laughs> And then he just becomes young, hot step grandpa because she's got like a 35 year old son who could have a kid. The one hard day. part is over. And then he just skips it. Yeah. He's just he's just young, young, grand, young step grandpa. Wow. Because a lot of women skip the whole having a baby and then they're young, hot step grandma. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're called like Lily or something, you know. <laughs> Sophia Vergara moves to Charleston. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, <laughs> did you hear about this baby clothing company blasted for firing an employee who asked to work remotely when her newborn was hospitalized? No, I didn't see that. So there's this big company and this woman created it because she had a daughter who had like eczema or something. So she created this great baby company that everyone loves. Mm -hmm. And this girl was working for her and she adopted a child. And unfortunately, when the the child was born prematurely, the child's in NICU, but she is the parent. She didn't carry the child. She is a parent. And so in requesting more time off, basically they said no. And the story got out. And I mean... You're like you're running a baby company and she was just, you know, like she wasn't giving her the same rights that she would maybe a mother who carried a child that was in the NICU or she was like, can I work from home? And she was Mm -hmm. like, no. So then she had to go on and apologize. And I actually think she did a pretty good apology. She was just like, I'm 100 percent wrong. I totally feel terrible. We're looking at all these policies. Mm -hmm. She didn't completely like throw her staff under the bus. Mm -hmm. She was like, it was wrong and it's terrible anyway i thought so you thought she handled it pretty well i mean i think what happened was awful and i think but i'm also think it's a like i would also take it as like hey this story got out there and providing this little boy is okay you know this is something to think about you just have to think about all the time what you're doing with employees Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is why I'm terrified to hire anyone. <laughs> well, because, like, yeah, then the, the, the pressure of their bottom thing. line. But I would argue, does anyone really have to go into the office anyway? Nowadays, everyone's doing this, like, virtual job. Right. Everyone's on and Slack. She Unless she's, like, like, sewing the baby clothes. Well, I'm like, she still wanted to work. Like, yeah. that's the thing. She still wanted to work, but she's like, my child's in the NICU. Like, yeah. I need to be near this hospital. Yeah. I need to be within... You know, a couple hours so I can hold him and bond Bonds, with him yeah. and all that other stuff. Yeah. So anyway. Um, Not a good look, but we love an apology. Yeah, we love an apology. Now, this other TikTok viral thing. Oh, I'm, right? I'm caught up on this. Okay, I've, so, I've did a lot of research on this, oh, too. Oh, let's talk about it. So this girl goes, <laughs> I want to tell you about my roommate. My roommate was a Victoria's Secret model, and she's super popular now, and she's super popular on this app. But... She um, would steal, all of her stories were bullshit. She would steal all of, We fe- one day we went through her stuff and we saw that she'd stolen a lot of our things. Like she'd come back wearing my shirt and I'd be like, that's my shirt. And she'd be like, no, it's not. I got it on a modeling shoot. And she's like, that is my makeup on the collar. You don't wear that shade. Like stop lying. It's my clothes. So they go into her room one day when she's not there and the whole apartment stunk and they find the suitcase and they open the suitcase and it's all her old trash and dirty clothes and tampons. it's like old tamp used tampons it's toilet paper that she chose not to flush and put in there so she obviously had some weird gross thing happening mm-hmm. and they asked her to leave and then in the uh comments there's people guessing who it was mm-hmm. so then of course i went to that girl's page and uh i was like watching her and i'm just like well like i'm just like you're a little stinky bird if this okay. is true. This is some crazy stuff. Whenever something blows up, I look at the other videos and this girl does post videos that are always like trying to get some kind of attention. Like the the, the one that people suspect or the, the one who told on the, the one who told. Okay. Like all of her stuff is like her opinions on stuff and hot takes. Yeah. Like it's not like she's a random girl who's like, I have to get this off my chest. Right. So that was I was a little bit like, okay. And then some people were like, okay, clearly this person has like serious mental illness, like trauma type stuff. The one that was carrying her poop around? Yeah. So okay. they're like, this is like a whole nother dimension of stuff that maybe right. you don't want to get into. And then they're accusing everyone of stuff. Then the girl's like, I didn't know that this is going to go viral and everyone's going to like start pointing fingers at people. And she'll be like, it's not Taylor Hill. It's not this. But she's not denying everyone. So people are getting like completely harassed for like poop stains. <laughs> And then the girl who did post the apology, it was it was a or not apology, saying it wasn't her. It was a weird video. So I'm fully invested in this, but like I kind of, it, yeah, she left everyone hanging. I <laughs> I just think like the tell alls are like getting to be. So I one time put on a wig and did a TikTok where I acted like I mean, fifty percent of the people got it and follow me and was like and I. So I acted like I was a disgruntled waitress that waited on Heather McDonald. <laughs> and I kept, I kept doing it where I like, I kept pausing, you yeah. know, like, like, yeah. so I used to be a waitress <laughs> and I'm going to tell you about the worst celebrity I ever waited on. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> you have to wait to the end so I get the most possible engagement. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, 
and it, and it was like this is ridiculous. And then it, I ended with that she owned that the bill was fifty seven dollars, mm-hmm. and she only tipped me a hundred dollars. <laughs> and I was like, you put me through hell because you you know said the butter wasn't soft. And some of the people were like, who? Are we expected to do, to like that's more than a hundred percent? And like everyone, like people, are like she's a comedian. Like the people are just so. I just once in a while like to do that in this because yes. it gets in their algorithm and they're yes. like, who the fuck is this bitch? Yes. Like why? How did this show up? I don't understand what this is. <laughs> I did a recently a video making um, Jacob Elordi's bath water. Yes, and everyone thought I was seriously from like salt burn. Put, from Saltburn putting milk in a drink and they were like Hannah this is disgusting you're a horrible oh, the bartender cocktail, I saw that yeah I was like guys it's a fucking it's a bit at the end it's a joke and I had to come I'm like guys this is a joke I'm not actually recommending did you like the movie Saltburn okay I was obsessed with it I loved it did you watch it more than once no I'm not that messed up okay I, I like I, th- I mean I still thought it was a juicy movie to watch yeah um, I felt like it could be better like I, I, true I mean granted there were three shocking scenes but I was like I wanted there to be almost more revealed. Yeah. Like about the family and stuff. The like spin I feel at like the end. I love, an, I love a spin, but it was quick. It was quick and there wasn't enough of a spin. I'm like, okay. Not to, I'm not giving away any spoilers, but yeah. someone said it would have been way more interesting if he wasn't. I already gave away the spo- spoilers. Okay, so like weeks people ago. were like, all this just for real estate. Like, it would have been way more interesting if, like, as a kid, he started obsessing about these people. Yes, I, that's And what this I'm was saying. a long lead. Instead, it's like, okay, you got a house. Like, I'll. Really? Like later in life you got a house? Is that all you care about? Or even go even deeper and find out that like, you know, somebody in his life was like used or killed or yes, something by yes, one of them. Yes, you're right. It could have taken one more level. I like movies that get reactions out of me, but I don't like gory and I don't like scary. And it was a little I like, gory. Yeah. I like weird. Yeah. So I the like fact weird. that I, I was like... making like lemon faces, I thought it was entertaining. Yeah, I liked like psychological thrillers. Yeah. Um, this girl is a bridesmaid for hire. I saw that. She makes up to um well i w- really read the whole article and i went deep and i'm like oh I you went hard i don't really think this is that great of a business well she has a lot of now she has got people that say i'll do it too and when i really think about oh, so how she's franchising it she's franchising which isn't a bad idea and i i you know i get why maybe somebody would just be like i just feel like if you don't really have a good friend to do it <laughs> Why are you even having bridesmaids? It's not, no. I mean, listen, I didn't really have bridesmaids. I do Neither sort of I. regret it, but I'm still friends with those girls. Like, yeah. it's like, and one of the reasons I didn't do the bridesmaids is because of like drama with my That's sister exactly and all that. What and I, I did. just chose not to do it. I never had any official bridesmaids, but we had a bachelorette. They all knew who they were when well, we were we had at my wedding. We a bachelorette wedding. too. I'm like, but every- no, I wasn't like, you are summoned and you are not. Like, if you want to come get ready before the wedding, come through. Right. My friends know where it is, my close friends. I didn't want any of the drama of the picking. I always feel, I guess, it's like you're just in. And then she has to. So then she has to go and like work out a, bo- a backstory, which is basically there was That's... a movie, I think, where Kevin Hart or somebody was the, the was the best man. Yeah. But you have to work out like a, a backstory. So she's like, so if she went to, you know, did a semester at sea, I'll be that friend from semester at sea that kept in touch with her all these years. Mm, so that it's none believable. of the other friends knew. And she goes, sometimes they have friends, but she just wants a girl that like has her shit together to like <laughs> crack the whip with the other people. <laughs> Someone who's not blackout. But this yeah. is the thing, now that she's getting attention, now if anyone sees her at a wedding, they're gonna think she's no, that's hired. What I said. And I also like looked at the her and I was like, is up. also I felt like she's cute, but she's getting a little up there. <laughs> For the wedding age. We were talking about ageism and you're well, like, look, saying, she looks older than Kylie Jenner. No, so. but I'm just saying like, you know, you're not <laughs> going to be a bridesmaid when you're like 45 for a 30-year-old. She could be a, a maid of a, a mom for the bride if the mom passed away. Well, I mean, it's just... <laughs> That's fucked up. I just can't imagine when you're spending so much on a wedding, yeah. from the dress to the food to the flowers to the venue, that you're going to spend another... You know, ten thousand dollars or whatever, eight thousand to have. She said her her lowest package is twenty five hundred. That's where she just gets the dress. I don't want a stranger that you want. In shows my up the wedding. wedding and like, but if you need her to go to the bachelorette and hang out all weekend, and I'm like, for all of that, like you could hire like a real singer or an actor to like entertain the crowd. Oh yeah, I also she's a stranger, and it's like, you what are you gonna talk about? Open up for your wedding. <laughs> Dating's crazy, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> and then they're like, oh, they'll help you do the speech. I'm like, the speech, what? AI AI can also, do the speech if you have for a, you. True. And yeah. like a wedding planner could help with a lot of this stuff. Also, I know. Like none of these things, no, no one remembers your speech. No one cares what you did in your bachelorette. Just calm the fuck down. And do you ima- I'll, I'll say it right now. Yeah. And I think I've said it on the show before. Mm-hmm. I rented my wedding dress. Good for you. And I did keep it a secret from mm. friends for a very long time. And I think eventually I, like 10 years, 15 years later, I came clean. But do you imagine if your other friends found out that, like, what? It's like, creepy. Like, Hannah, do you know <laughs> fucking Heather? Like, that girl is she not- She was rented. <laughs> that girl is not from semester at sea. Yeah, because what happens if she like, runs you, into you, people? Yeah. How many lies does she have to keep up with? I mean, you saw what, ha- what happened when Heather Gay figured out that Monica- <laughs> was was it, Yeah, <laughs> room of screenshots, everything! <laughs> like, that's- so I feel the same way. Like, I feel like if you're going to involve other people in your wedding in any, just be transparent. If you rent your dress, just fucking say yeah. it. Don't even try to lie. I shouldn't have lied about renting the dress. And then and then I thought about it. And for the cost, I'm like, I was a, a thin girl. Like, I could have gotten a sample. I could have mm. gotten any, you know. Yeah. And so many dresses don't need to be I got, expensive. I got like, my dress at a strip mall in Long Island. I like went to just try on shapes at like a random strip mall yeah. at this like little local shop. And the first dress I was like, I, I think I was stressed about shopping and I go, you know what? I f- the first dress I tried on, I go, I like it. $1,700, done. Never worried. And I live in New York City. I could have gone to Kleinfels. I could have gone to- I know, but I then- literally just, I wanted it off my chest and I, I really liked the dress. Okay, so I, <laughs> my, si- so I had interest but I had given my sister the idea to rent her dress. Oh. And then I went back to rent my dress at the same place. Uh-huh. And I only tried on a few dresses that day and chose it that day. Because again, I was like, I'm not going to be that girl that quits my job to plan a wedding. Mm-hmm. But then I sort of regretted not milking out the process a little bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that could have been kind of really fun to try on a bunch of dresses. Yeah. and Or act like you wanted a venue but then you really didn't and you get like a free meal <laughs> have a freak out in a public place and be yeah, like it's like, a lot of pressure it's a lot of money and pressure i think i i do that all the these time, are though. things you need to milk out yeah wedding shopping mm-hmm. um the venue thing where you get like some free meals mm-hmm. uh cake tastings at free cake pa- tasting at, at for ba- sure at bakeries and then also once you get pregnant even if you have an easy pregnancy mm-hmm. you cannot don't let, lift a finger don't let your husband know you're having an easy pregnancy. That's yeah. a huge mistake I did. Make huge. him carry you around. Just oh, like <laughs> even if you've had the easiest pregnancy ever, just be like, ah! <laughs> just pretend you puked every time you leave the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, just be like, I'm like, like I was braggy about like how easy, easy it was. was. So your husband was like, was pick like, that up yourself. Yeah, he was like, what do you mean? He's like, He's you're like, not going to the gym today, lazy. <laughs> so those are the mistakes I made. Um, another mistake is uh, Jeannie Mai, Jeannie Mae mm-hmm. from, um, well, she was most famous for The Real, mm-hmm. but she married this guy and she does not want the prenup to go through. She said she did not read it thoroughly. They're getting divorced. And I guess he has more money than she. And that's not going to work. <laughs> I didn't know you could say, wait, I didn't read the whole thing. I just did. I just like spark it. note. <laughs> Do you imagine every contract? You're just like, wait a minute. I didn't see that part. I didn't read it. I didn't read it. I can't read. Now, Jillian Michaels is predicting a massive fallout, meaning your bowels, mm. from Ozempic. <laughs> your insides. <laughs> well, yeah, you're skinny because you have nothing inside you. And and then um, Terry Dubrow said he did go on it mm. to lose his... He lost 10 to 15 pounds, but he said he went off of it before the holidays because... He missed being excited about eating, which I've heard a lot about, too, Yeah, where you're just like, oh, my God, like, I want to be hungry again. I want to be excited. He had a little nauseous, was a little nauseous. He did, didn't didn't really drink on it. And then he also said, you got to be careful um, if you go on it that you if, because you aren't going to be very hungry when you do eat. Even though you could just like get a super yummy pasta because you're only going to have like two bites of it, you'll be fine. You really need, you really should have like solid protein. Yeah. And only eat like, you know, a thing of salmon, a chicken breast, have that because otherwise you're going to lose the muscle. Yeah. And the elasticity and all that stuff and in your face. That That's the way you go. Yeah. But he said it's a miracle drug and every, and you know, get used to it, people. They're skinny. Have you tried it? No. Do you want to? 
I'm scared that I'll be weak. Like, because I have a phobia of being hungry. Mm. Like, I always have a snack with me. And I'm afraid that if I'm, like, just, like, have nothing in me, my body will be, like, I'll faint and stuff. Yeah. Like, because our, our job requires so much energy that I just get scared I don't have energy. I, I have heard that the energy goes a lot down. And, like, all I need is energy when you go yeah. on stage. So, and I know what I feel like without energy and I get scared. Also, I do get scared that, like, I I don't know if I'd forgive myself if, like, I get cancer or something from a zump and it's like, oh, you did that for 10 pounds? Yeah. Like, 10 pounds, you got cancer. Was that worth it? <laughs> a lot of people might go it was yeah I'm for, that, not, for like, that one for I, that one year in 2023 I, like I have a fat ass and honestly I like it like I like my curves <laughs> no I, I think it can really work for people it's great I just think you gotta have an end game I think some people that are gonna go on it True. forever it's fine and you might be fine for the rest of your life and you can afford to be on it for the rest of your life Yeah, but you know and yeah. if you're having health problems right now because of your weight then I, I think the risk oh, is worth it. Let's yeah. fucking go. Yeah. Inject me up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 50 Cent <laughs> My became favorite 25 Cent. He oh, lost, so he went on his own he, Yeah, he lost a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Listen, Sid. Anybody that anybody that loses a lot of weight within Quickly. like six months. And you haven't seen workout photos, not no. one. Do you know about Ballerina Farm? No. This is another internet thing. She has like seven million followers. Yeah. And she has eight kids. And she's Mrs. America. Oh. Um, and she like makes her own bread oh. and lives on this farm. And oh. everybody's like obsessed with her and they love her and everything. But then then people started to turn on her because they found out that her husband, his dad, owns JetBlue. <laughs> 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 and they're like, "Why are you making your own bread, bitch?" <laughs> like everyone's also, like, like, "If you care about the environment that much, your dad is literally the head of like fossil fuel. <laughs> like worse than Taylor Swift is your dad in um, the environment." <laughs> and then other people are like, "Why? Why? Do, you know, what does it matter? Let her live her life, and you know, <laughs> let her be a pageant girl if that's how she wants to use her body and her beauty." Yeah. And like she was one of those girls; she had her eighth baby and yeah. like got in her gown and had like a pageant the following week. No. And everyone's like, "That's not good for your body." And then other people are like, "Well, what if you had a wedding to go to? You know, and you were hired to be a bridesmaid <laughs> and you just had a baby? You'd have to put on a dress and work too." <laughs> I do think I support all women in the arts, but there's something like hypocritical about being like I'm about the earth and nature but I will film all of it to post online and hope I get likes like so it's a it's a catch-22 no I was watching this other guy that's like a day in the life of a single dad you know and yeah. it was like how much he does and the kid w he had to wake up the kid had to wake up and I've seen those other videos where people are mocking like the way the parents like oh I have to get up in the middle of the night with my baby and they're like how about not having the fucking ring light <laughs> On your kid <laughs> at 3 a.m. to like show the world this is what it's like. Yeah, we know what it's like. People have been having kids also, and raising kids. If you're, Guess what? If you have kids, you're probably not going to sleep through the night solidly. And if you're really tired, you don't have time to vlog it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's like, here is, here is a day in the life of being a mom of five. Also, um, you took five hours to edit that. Yeah. If you're That's really what that I'm busy. Like, I'm like, that takes effort. I know. <laughs> also, you're like, hey, shut up. I have to film. Like, no, I don't like that at all. Or at least own it. Be like, look, I'm bored and I want to create some content and do I don't want to work. Do you remember that that classic gotcha moment when there was a mom and she was filming her son and her together and she posted it without realizing that she didn't do the second cut version. She did the original. And so she was like, remember, cry, cry. <gasps> and the kid's like, eh. <laughs> and she goes. So today was a really hard day. We had to put down Muff and our dog. She kills and, the dog for the and content. She, and she's you're crying. <laughs> she's crying more. And he goes, I am, Mom. I'm actually really sad. And, she goes, and we're really on. And like, it was, she was like a huge YouTuber. I need to Google that. Oh, my God. It is amazing. It I is wanna, like yeah. social media child abuse to the umph degree. I want a reality show of mommy vloggers because I want to see what the life is actually like behind the vlog. I want to see, like, do the kids, they all have to do brand deals. These kids are working. Oh, yeah. They are tired. I always, I talk about it a lot, yeah. how I think it's so wrong. 
and it's not right. These moms are going to get sued in the future for sure by oh, the kids. Oh, 100%. Or at least I hope it's going there's to a college one, fund. There's one state that has cracked down. I think it's Indiana or Illinois. Yeah. That, that said, you know, no, you, you got to like, just like if you're going to take, you know, your kid's check from working on a sitcom, you can yeah. only take 10%. Like, you can't be take, having all the money With the when brand you're deals. getting a $30,000 deal for dishwashing soap mm -hmm. and you're showing your kids in the dishwashing soap. Yeah. Also, they're not fully, like, consenting to right. being Right, you can't be fully consenting. It's no. like a very wishy, it's, you know, it's the and wild, wild west. And I get it if your kids it's are cute, say. you want to show it, and then people are giving you money, and next thing you know, honestly, the world is burning. <laughs> how did we get here <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's true and then the kids are just like or maybe they maybe they're into doing it at a certain age and then yeah. they're not at another because yeah. kids change i mean kids want to sometimes quit gymnastics at 12 but they were super into it at eight for sure so it's like and then you're like and then they would say to the kids they'd say well if you don't do this we're gonna have to switch schools yeah and your little sister is not going to be able to take ballet lessons and we're gonna lose the house yeah there's this one girl uh. i guess that has shared her story she's not 18 yet but mm -hmm. she's she's like anonymous and she's like gonna sue or get away from her parents when she's 18 mm -hmm. because that's the kind of pressure that they've put on her but i don't know that they but these kids are featured mm -hmm. they seem to like to make the bread and <laughs> they love and uh she seems sourdough. to be happy and then this was just kind of funny. I just caught this the other day. They, this is Hilaria. And, you know, this guy that posts it is a you know, paparazzi or whatever. And she's just walking on the phone and she just ignores him. And she's like, oh, I love that. So that is wonderful. I love that for you. And she's still doing her, her accent. accent. Yeah. And um, she's still going she's strong. Not, yeah, she didn't really give it up. And I feel like all of a sudden people just were like, I do think that was one of the greater greater moments is discovering that she was not from Spain, and all the podcast episodes. But she of identifies. Her being like, I'm from I'm from Spain, so my family's from What's, Spain. How do you and then, say and uh, cucumber? <laughs> and then when he was like, well, you know, and he was get, getting great little, um, you know, late night banter, uh, doing his wife's impression. I'm like, she was doing Sofia Vergara. Yeah. She saw it. She saw how sexy it was. She was doing Safara, Sofia Vergara in Modern Family. She did one study abroad in Barcelona, and that was her whole personality. And I And then that. everyone's like, doesn't, <laughs> wouldn't Alec Baldwin know that she went to high school in Boston? I'm like, do you think that old fuck even <laughs> asked her? Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody what you've got going on. You're taking over the internet. <laughs> You're great with the crowd work. I'm on. You're I'm on a, the internet. You're a real out here in these you're streets. A real hot stand up. I'm trying my best out here. You're a married woman. <laughs> you're still married, right? Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> married woman to a nice silver fox. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, what you guys? You have a a podcast with your husband. Yes, burner phone. Then a podcast with my bestie, Paige DeSorbo, yes. Giggly Squad. Shout out. Huge, so two different vibes. Huge show. Whatever you're into. Yes. And yeah, I have where, a bunch of shows coming up. Where's your next show? I'm going to Reno, actually. So, oh, great. So at a casino, so it's going to get crazy <laughs> on Friday. And Fun. then a lot of random places, com slash shows. Yeah. Go see it. Um, we've hung out in real life. We're I've besties. seen your stand-up. Very fun, very fun crowd Thank that you. you bring. And I'm really just happy to call you a, a sister in comedy. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking nerd. <laughs> Just a woman in the arts. No, I love coming on this pod and being able to talk shit with you. And congrats on everything you created because you're the shit. And then I really want Paige to come on. And then we're just going to talk about you. Oh, my God. Paige would love to come on. I'll Will she talk shit about you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, cause that's what I really Oh, yeah. Like. That's bonding. That's true. She'll make fun of me the entire time. Yeah. Entire time. And then I'll come back for revenge. And then we'll have like a whole war. Yeah. I yeah, love it. I just like go that. back and forth. Yeah. Podcast wars. And, yeah. Yeah. Podcast I love it. Wars. Thank you. you. Bye.